Have you ever wondered about your blood folate levels, like why they might be low despite eating a healthy, somewhat balanced diet? And what it might suggest about your genetics and other things in line with this. My name is Dr. Taranella, and this channel is dedicated to helping you optimize and improve your health. In this video, we're uncovering the hidden factors that might be influencing your folate levels, including the different types of folates, the genetic influence of MTHFR gene alteration on folate levels, and the importance of understanding your actual test results. If you're finding this information useful and a value add, be sure to hit the subscribe and like button to continue getting videos and health insights like this one. All right, let's dive into looking at your low blood folate levels. So the first thing in understanding your folate blood test is to know that your folate blood test is not measuring just one type of folate. It's actually measuring a whole bunch of different kinds of folate. And there's a whole spectrum of folates that are floating around in our blood from things like folic acid to dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate and even methylfolate. And of course, there's lots of different kinds of folates in between those as well. And your body relies on various enzymes in order to convert these different types of folates into the other kinds of folates. And specifically, it relies on enzymes in order to convert the inactive forms of folate to the more active forms of folate, like methylfolate, which is one of the forms that your body actually uses for various functions in your body. It does use other forms of folate as well, like dihydrofolate. Now, here's the thing with your folate blood test and where things get interesting. Some of these enzymes, like the one that's produced from the MTHFR gene, can be genetically altered, meaning that they don't work exactly like they're supposed to. They're a little bit deficient or lacking efficiency in their ability to produce the methylfolate. So if you have a mutation or alteration in your MTHFR gene, your body may struggle with producing the methylfolate, that is converting the folic acid into the methylfolate form, one of the forms that your body actually needs and uses. And this can lead to lower levels of this active folate in your blood in that circulating route. And it's a crucial point, especially for those that are walking around with homozygous or heterozygous MTHFR mutations in the C677T and sometimes to the 1298C gene. In these cases, the low folate levels are genetically driven and perhaps that's the cause for low folate levels in general in most people. And we'll talk about that as well. So the other thing to note with the folate blood test is there's actually two different types of folate blood tests. There's the plasma folate blood test, which is also a serum folate blood test, and there's also the red blood cell folate test. The plasma folate test reflects what's currently circulating in your blood right now and is heavily influenced by what you've consumed, vitamins or otherwise, in the last 24 to 48 hours. If you've recently eaten like four to five foods or taking supplements, then your plasma folate level might be temporarily elevated and look normal. In fact, most of the time when I'm seeing a plasma folate or serum folate levels tested, it always looks high or, you know, right there at the upper end of the range. On the other hand, the red blood cell folate test gives a more total encompassing picture or longer term picture of what your folate status is. And that's because our red blood cells lived for about four months. And the red blood cell folate test is reflecting the amount of folate inside these red blood cells and your tissues as well. And so it's offering a more reliable and global indicator of what your folate status is in your tissues. Since many of the foods that we eat on a regular basis are fortified with folic acid, it's possible to have a high plasma folate level, but actually a low or suboptimal red blood cell folate, and especially if your body struggles to convert that folic acid into the more active form, the methylfolate. There are also genetic alterations in folate transport that can also create some issues with getting that folate into the cell and transported where it needs to go. What's interesting is that numerous studies have shown a close relationship between serum and red blood cell folate levels and the MTHFR genotype. Those with uh, MTHFR C677T homozygous or TT are in particular tend to have lower folate levels and higher homocysteine levels, which typically is going to be high if you have a insufficiency or lack of folate. Even when supplementing with folic acid, the studies find that these people with this genotype are going to have low serum or low 
red blood cell folate and high homocysteine levels. And this su suggests that simply taking folic acid might not be enough for those with this genetic mutation. And most people know this that have the MTHFR gene alteration, but if you don't, folic acid typically is not going to do the job for you. One study in particular looked at how different doses of folic acid impacted folate levels in women with different MTHFR genotypes. And the findings are quite clear. Despite taking 4,000 micrograms of folic acid daily for six months, women with MTHFR C677T homozygous genotype still had lower plasma and red blood cell folate levels than those with normal MTHFR genotype. And so the message that I get from this is that you need to make sure you're taking the right kind of folate when you have this MTHFR genotype going on. And for those with MTHFR mutations, methylfolate supplements are generally going to be the right choice for you. But it's not the only choice, and some people do have side effects with methylfolate as well. So here's the key takeaways. If you have a low red blood cell or serum slash plasma folate level, there's a good chance that you might have an MTHFR gene alteration. And the severity of your MTHFR gene alteration, meaning homozygous or heterozygous, will influence how slowly your folate levels are going to rise and also how much folate you need to consume in order to get into that normal range. In the U.S., while it's quite common to see high plasma folate, high serum folate due to the fortified foods, it's not uncommon or it's quite common to find red blood cell folate levels that are below 700 nanograms per deciliter, which I would consider suboptimal. What you do about this depends on various factors like your mood, your energy levels, and your homocysteine levels. Just like a lot of things in medicine, it's not always black and white in a one-size-fits-all scenario. By the way, if you're finding this information helpful and useful, and you want to learn more about methylfolate, folate supplementation, and MTHFR, and how your genetics might be influencing your health, you might want to check out my course on MTHFR and my book on MTHFR. Both are very useful tools in navigating these types of things with genetic alterations, and I'll put a link in the description about these. So hopefully this video has given you a better understanding of your low folate blood test, what it might mean, what you might do about it. If you have questions about anything in the video, drop those in the comments section, and I'm happy to answer your questions. If you want a more detailed answer, consider joining the membership program. I'll have more time and attention to dedicate towards that answer. Now, one question you might have after looking at and understanding what low folate blood test means is what to do about folate side effects what it means about your health, and what things might you do to mitigate some of these things. You can find more about that topic in this video here.